G'day, welcome back to another episode of Toggle. Well this uh, draw knife that I made up is doing pretty good. Kay's up here with me today, we found that it didn't work so well on the stringy bark because stringy bark's just too fluffy, it just clogs straight up so uh, she's doing a better job using the machete on that and I've been doing some of the wattles in the black woods with the draw knife and as I said, as you can see it is, uh, it is getting the bark off quite well a lot easier than the old way that I would have done it. We've got a fire at the back going, eventually that will spread right across the full length that's so we can char pretty much the entire log at the same time. As we're taking this bark off we are seeing a lot of little grubs under the bark and that is exactly why you take the bark off and then you give it a good char as well. Stop those bugs getting in and eating the timber. Just helps preserve it for longer. So. Once we get all of these done, it's going to take us quite some time, but once we've got them all done, then we'll take them down, we'll start putting them into the holes, uh, and then in the next day or two, hopefully I'll be able to start milling up some slabs of wood that we can use to start boxing up for the, uh, the veggie patch. These are all for the veggie patch. It is getting really hot up here today and uh, it's actually the warmest day we've had since winter which is fantastic, beautiful, the sun's out and it's drying everything out. It probably makes it extra hotter because I'm working beside this fire so we've got quite a decent fire going. Now I'm just putting the logs in two at a time and just rotating them to get all those outsides charred. Well, we've, uh, we've got 10 logs stripped, which is fantastic effort. Um, and we've got, well, at the moment, I'm charring number five, log number five. I'm gonna char, char one more to give us the six. Then we're gonna take the dogs for a walk down to the bridge, let them play in the creek there for a little bit, because it'll probably be about five, six, seven degrees cooler down there, just in the shade down near the creek. So that'll be nice for Kay and I to be able to just sit down there and we'll let the dogs have a bit of a swim. Once we've done that, we'll uh, come back and we'll put those six poles into the ground and then I'm going to check the bees. I haven't had a good look through their hive yet, but uh, they're certainly very active. Feeding them throughout the winter for those uh, seven or eight weeks that I had to certainly paid off. Uh, so it's, it's a really strong hive now and there is so much uh, flowers out at the moment. All the wattle is flowering, all the blackwood uh, is flowering at the moment as well as we've had all of the bulbs everywhere there's daffodils and uh, jonquils and stuff everywhere and all the fruit trees have all been in flower as well so there's been plenty for the bees to be harvesting so i'll go and check them and then we'll probably wrap it up for a day here and we'll come back up in the next day or two weather permitting of course and uh, i've got some new blades on order for the bandsaw so i'll pick them up uh, tomorrow actually and then yeah we should be able to come up and mill up some of the slabs and start actually putting uh, the first garden bed together. I think what I'll do is I'll fully assemble and fill up one so we can start planting in it then I'll fully assemble and fill up the second and then the third rather than you know doing all the posts and all the slabs I'll just get one completed and then move on to the next. 
uh, that'll give us staggered crops too. But anyway, uh, I've just got to finish charring these logs. All I'm doing is just rolling them into the coals and, uh, and then, yeah, we'll see you in a second when we take the dogs for a walk down to the creek. I'm just sitting here in the shade trying to cool off a little bit between turning those logs and before we take the dogs for a walk and as I've been sitting here I've noticed a couple of queen uh, wasps those uh, European wasps flying around so I thought I'd have a quick chat with you about uh, the life cycle of those wasps and what the plan is this summer for getting rid of them uh, I fed you little bits and pieces as uh, over winter of what we're going to do but basically this is it so Firstly, stage one, right before spring, or right on spring, is when the queens will hatch out. Now, it's only the queens you're going to see flying around at this time of year. Um, basically, they've got two things on their mind. They need to eat, and they're looking to make a nest. If you can catch 100 queens, that's potentially 100 nests you've just stopped being built. Uh, so, the more queens you can catch early on in the season, the better. Now, uh, the Vespex stuff that I got from Matt, uh, it's no good for catching the queens, that's more just for catching all of the workers. So for the queens, uh, we were told by some friends of ours, uh, Danny and Kathy, just down the road here, the Cradle Winds Farms, they were talking to us about a product, well it's not a product, it's something you can make yourself, it's called Lorry Lure, it was invented by a guy called Lorry, and it's basically honey, uh, water, and a little bit of yeast, to, oh sorry, it might have been a little bit of vinegar, I'll have to look that recipe up, I'll put the recipe up, here's the recipe, right here. Okay, so I made a triple batch of that, uh, let it ferment, and I'm going to put that into a heap of traps to catch queens. Now you do that right up until you start to see all the other wasps being caught in the traps that I will use the Vespex in. Uh, that'll happen during summer. Now then, late summer, there's another Vespex product which uh, the wasps will take back to the nest and it doesn't kill them straight away so it gives the wasps time to ingest it take it back to the nest and then it will poison the entire nest but that can only be done right near the end of summer because that's done when they're trying to stock up ready for winter uh, get ready for their hibernation so they're basically storing up a larder okay that's when you do that so there's three phases um, as I said phase one is when the queens come out Phase two is when all the workers are out and about. Phase three is when they're stockpiling ready to try and get them through winter. And if you can cover all three phases, then you're gonna do a far greater job of getting rid of those wasps. And then in subsequent years, there'll be a lot less too. Um, and that's the plan, is that we'll just keep doing this year after year until eventually, uh, you know, there's practically no wasps. There'll always be some, they're always gonna come in from other areas. Um, but if we can keep a lot of them off the land here, that would be fantastic. So that's the plan with those wasps. Uh, I better go and turn those logs again once or twice more. It's like I'm cooking, isn't it? And then we'll take those dogs for a walk because it is really hot today. <laughs> but I'm loving it. It's great. The more days like this we got, the better. Just make noise. Stop pulling. Oh, the thing's so full of water. Yeah. Thor knows where the water is. Come on. Always love the water. Go oh, cool. there you go. Ah. 
He's just having fun exploring. What are you doing, Thor? Looking for rocks. I don't know what it is about Thor wanting to collect rocks, but he's always digging up and collecting rocks out of the creek. It's the moment of truth. I uh, picked up the key yesterday when I was up the block, so now we're going to see if this starts. And all the dogs are coming in to see as well. <laughs> so I did notice there was a loose wire in underneath uh, the bonnet here. This just lifts up. Um, so it was, apparently it was to do with the kill switch, so I've connected that up. That might have been the problem, but we'll see how we go. Set the choke, throttle, uh, it's blades disengaged, it is in park, let's see. Is a huge success it runs it goes 
into gear, back to neutral, into reverse, back to neutral, the gears are working, it's running, fantastic, uh, I'm pretty happy with that and I know nothing about mechanics and, and that sort of thing, so it just goes to show, now even if you don't know something about something, chances are you can find videos on the internet, on YouTube, which will tell you how to fix things, and with just a little bit of uh, mucking around and patience and persistence, you can make things work. So uh, very happy with that. We'll have to get this back up the block, get some mowing done. The weather's getting warmer now. The grass is growing. We're going to need to be mowing. So I'm ecstatic. That's awesome. Now, I've had this game trail camera sitting down here for probably about a week now. Um, so I just need to take it back. Need to turn it off first and uh, see what we've got on it. Alright, so, so when we get home, I'll take the card out, put it into the computer, we'll have a look and see what we've captured on the game trail camera. So you'll notice that this Tasmanian Devil has no markings on it. And then an hour later, this Tassie Devil shows up. He's got white markings on its shoulder, a broken white line. Devils are marsupials, and they carry their young in a pouch. It looks like this one is carrying young. They're also listed as endangered. The next night we have a rat. I'm not sure if this is a native rat or not. I need to do a bit of research. Now keep an eye out in the top right corner. That was two quolls chasing each other. Quolls are also marsupials. They're found in Australia and Papua New Guinea. These ones are spotted tail quolls and the species is listed as threatened. This here is a Bennett's Wallaby, another marsupial. Now the next day we have a grey goshawk visit. Not sure why they're called grey goshawks when they're pure white, but definitely an impressive bird. This species is listed as threatened with only an estimated 110 breeding pairs in Tasmania. Now that evening, that Tasmanian devil with no markings makes another appearance. having a good old feed on a bit of wallaby there I think now an hour later after him that one with the broken shoulder line shows up this is the same sequence as last night It's chased off by this newcomer. And you can see he's got a beautiful solid chest stripe. I should say she, because this one appears to be carrying young in its pouch as well. Now, while most Aussies would call these crows, this is actually known as a forest raven, another common visitor to our block. And on the third night, we have a different one again. This one's just got a small rump stripe. following night we have the devil with the solid chest stripe back again I slowed this down so that you can see that full pouch this here this is a Tasmanian native hen it's a flightless bird common to most of Tasmania we've got quite a few of them on the block as well
Well, it's a pretty uh, wet day up here today and cool. Uh, it's been raining on and off for the last couple of days. It's not heavy rain, it's just light misty rain, uh, but it will enable me to get a few things done up here. I went and got some new blades a couple of days ago for the timber mill, so I need to start getting some timber milled up again. Um, but before I do that, I've got the lorry lure that I was talking about and the wasp traps. So basically the instructions were you just get a, a bottle like this, normal uh, you know, 1.25 litre bottle or whatever, uh, or you'd use a 2 litre bottle, it doesn't really matter, but about 15 centimetres up, drill three 1 centimetre diameter holes. And then you fill up uh, probably to about there, about halfway up, so about seven, half, eight centimeters. Fill it up with the lorry lure. This is the lorry lure mixture. So, uh, as I said, that was like honey and water and the vanilla essence. It was the vanilla essence that has 35% uh, organic alcohol or 35% alcohol or something in it, which I was surprised to see sold, you know, in Coles and Woolies. But yeah, it just it's just the normal vanilla essence that you use in cooking. Um, Got to make sure it's got that alcohol component in it though, because that's what makes this ferment. When it ferments, the bees won't go for it, because if it was just honey and water, the bees would be uh, going after it. We don't want to catch the bees, we just want to catch the, the queen wasps. So make sure that, and then you leave it out in the sun for a week, goes very cloudy and milky, uh, that's it, as it's fermenting and whatnot. Uh, if you're gonna sit it out like this, in a bottle, in the sun with a lid, make sure you undo the lid every day and do it up again. Otherwise the pressure will build up and build up in that, like anything that ferments, if anyone's done home brew and explode. So, that's what you want to do. So, uh, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bottles there that I'm going to string up around the place. Uh, a couple around here, a couple a bit further out. Uh, just spread them around and see how many of those queen wasps I can catch. So, uh, I'll get these filled up now and then we'll go out and we'll put a few out. should have bought a funnel. What I'm realizing is as I'm pouring the liquid in, it's actually, I didn't have either hole or the bottom. It's running out the hole, I gotta make sure that it goes between the holes. So it's a little bit of a challenge. But I'll probably put too much in the first one, because if I stuck with that amount, I'm not gonna have enough for all of them. Especially if I keep losing. Now it says to hang these about two meters above the ground. Which means they're going to be hanging them up like about that height somewhere. The rain started coming down again, but I want to get one of these lures over on the other side over here. So I'll go for a walk over across the bridge and out the other side and I'll pop one over there. I've put one down near the shed, one down near the veggie patch. We'll scatter them all around. Okay, the new blade is on, everything is set, so I just need to get started and see. Nervous? Yes. <laughs> it's a brand new blade, it should be fine, but still, just after the last couple of weeks of just break, 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 it just does start to make you wonder. So, new blade, we'll see how we go.
a piece of bark flicked off the outside edge and landed on the track I couldn't push it any further so having to come around in front and clear that so I've stopped the blade And we're back in business so it's actually a slightly skinnier blade and it's a finer blade too so i noticed the dust coming off was a lot finer and because that's black wood hence the dust mask um, using a lot more water i can smell the lime out of the uh, lime detergent uh, there so and i can see it frothing up so that's work that that just cut beautifully so uh, yeah i think we're back on track with that so that's really good Rain's really coming down now, but as I said, I'm underneath here, so I can stay dry, uh, and it's a good day to just keep getting more and more timber milled up, ready for doing those veggie patches. The only thing that's gonna hang me up today is getting out, and that's gonna be a challenge, getting back out of the paddocks. But I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. So I'm gonna mill up a couple more, and um, then I think I'll stop and go and have some lunch, because I'm getting a bit hungry. All right, well, thankfully the blade didn't break. It just jumped off the track, uh, jumped off the wheel, that's all. So it did bust a tooth, uh, one or two teeth off it, but that won't matter so much, uh, not in the scheme of things. Thankfully, like I said, the blade didn't break. So obviously just being a slightly different sized blade, I thought I had adjusted the tracking correctly because I did have to adjust it significantly compared to the other blade. Um, I must have just been off by a couple of mils, so I've just tweaked it again very finely. Hopefully it now stays on. Let's see how we go.
well, that was good. After that little scare just before. <laughs> so obviously that little bit of tracking, well, hopefully it worked okay. Uh, I did get one and a half slabs out just before, before it jumped off the track, so who knows. Anyway, uh, that slab did just crack a little bit too. Uh, just as I got through the end, it just opened up a little and cracked about that far down. Uh, but these are just for the garden bed, so that's all right. I'm not too phased about that. But I think I'm going to uh, have a break now. I'm going to go and got a couple of sausages there. I'm going to cook up and have myself a nice warm lunch before I get stuck back into it again. I've just cooked myself up some sausages and uh, made myself a coffee. So it's just nice to have this area now that's nice and dry uh, on days like today. When well, that's lunch done. And the sun's trying to come out. It's not going to. There's still a lot of cloud around, but at least it's a little bit brighter. Sort of lifts the mood a little. Um, now that I'm getting down lower, I'm getting towards where the pins are that are holding it. What I need to do is flip this log over and then I can continue to mill from the other side and then you end up being left with one slab on the bottom. Um, so yeah, and that way it'll be a lot more stable too because it's going to be sitting on this nice big flat area, not sitting on the cup where it's going to rock. Uh, even though it doesn't rock much because it is pinned, the lower down I get, as I said, those things are going to get in the way and I don't want to hit them so I'll just flip this over. Okay, be honest, leave a comment below. Who thought I wouldn't get that up on there? For a minute, I didn't think I was gonna get it up on there. <laughs> but it is. There's a lot of mud stuck on this and that's really bad for dulling blades. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll go and get the, the draw knife you saw me using earlier on. I'm gonna take a lot of that bark off, which will get rid of a lot of that mud so I don't dull the blade too much. Because like a chainsaw, or like any saw, for some reason cutting through dirt, you can understand rock, but even dirt and that, it's very abrasive, it blunts the teeth very quickly. So uh, I'll go and get that draw bar, get the bark off this. All right, well, I've uh, taken all that bark off the sides. You may notice that there's still dirt on the top, but that's all right, because I'll cut under that dirt so it was really only the dirt on the sides I needed to remove which I've now done also I noticed just as I was doing that there's some swallows flying around and they keep making passes in underneath here you may see them on the video but um, quite often this time of year swallows will come in and they'll nest under structures they make a little mud nest so who knows uh, and they normally do that in sheds and whatnot so we may find we get some swallows nesting in under here which I'd be totally okay with it's only the shed so yeah we'll see if they do or not anyway time to get this up and uh, mill some more timber well that's uh, that log finished being milled up what you can see there is actually four slabs high didn't pull them off because if I was stacking them over here on this side, on this other stack, then the handle would have hit the pile. That pile will get too high. I've said in the past, you can actually mill a slab, lift the saw blade up, go back, lower it further, mill again. You can keep doing this and going deeper each time and leave the boards there and then just pick them up in one lot. That's not a problem at all. So that's what I decided to do in the end. Now what you didn't see in all that was that that blade jumped off easily a dozen times. 
sometimes I got about that far and it jumped off and it was driving me batty. Uh, I did, I think part of it was the tracking, but I also think part of it was I realized a couple of times it was happening when I was going to adjust other parts on the mill, uh, especially the, uh, the guide that goes in and out. And I think what was happening was because it's a slightly thinner blade, uh, when I'm pushing forwards, as soon as I ease off and it moves back just that little bit, it was enough to pull the blade off. Uh, with, a, with a wider blade, there's still enough on the back that's hanging on if there's that little bit of movement. But because that is a, a thinner blade, I think that's what was going on. Because as soon as I worked that out and I just kept constant pressure on the whole way and never eased off, even if I stopped for a second, I just still kept the pressure on, that blade never jumped off. And I did the last three full lengths without the blade jumping off. So some of it was a little bit of the tweaking, but I think right towards the end, it was because I was easing off on the pressure and the mill was coming back ever so slightly. It was enough to pull the blade off. So um, that's that done. So I'm very happy with that. I've now got that milled. That blade never broke. I do have a spare because I did buy two. Uh, didn't have to touch the spare either. So this will run for a considerable time now, I would say. It's getting later on in the day though, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, clean up this area here. The sawdust is piling up. There's all of that scrap wood out there that I probably just want to get down to the um, wood pile. And eventually I'll slice it up into smaller pieces and we'll use it for firewood. But I just need, this area is getting way too cluttered now. I've got to clear all that out. So I might spend an hour or so doing that this afternoon. Then I'm going to chill home. So I'm going to wrap up the video here. Um, so the next time we come up, what you'll see is we'll be taking these slabs and these slabs and the other ones that I've cut all down to the veggie patch. Uh, we'll put the posts in. I never ended up standing those posts up that we charred and putting them in. It was getting a bit late the other day, so Kay and I decided to just head on home. Um, so the next time we're up here, we'll get the posts into the ground and we'll start to put all these on. We'll get that veggie patch sorted. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode as usual. I hope you have a great weekend and a great week next week. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And uh, I do appreciate your comments too when you leave me little uh, tips or advice or even just a, hey, you're doing really good. It's enough for me to keep going and making these for you. So I do appreciate that feedback. So thanks very much, guys. Alrighty. Till next week. Stay safe. Take care. Have a great week. I'll see you next Friday. Cheers.